five. Uh, five. Per Wait. Governor Baker's Six. orders Seven. suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A, section 20, the public will not be allowed to physically access this school committee meeting. This meeting will be conducted remotely via Zoom technology. For instructions to follow this meeting live, see the notice of meeting posted on whittiertech.org. Uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Ready? I Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, for which it stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for, for all. all. Okay, moving on. Hey, Tony. How about yeah. comment? Comments can be emailed in advance of the 6.30 p.m. start time to lran at whittier.tech.ma.us. All comments will be recorded to the record and all attempts will be made to mention them live during the meeting. Any emails received during the meeting before the public comment period ends will also be attempted to be mentioned. I have a couple of letters that I have to read here. These are regarding uh, sports. Dear Superintendent Lynch and school committee members, my name is Allison Dawkins. I'm a fellow educator in Haverhill Public Schools and parent of two sophomores, Madison and Victoria. Madison is a student in CAD program and Victoria is in health assisting. While both are high honor students and are part of Skills USA and excelling academically, they are also athletes who play soccer, basketball, and track, struggling with the decision that has been made not to play sports again this year. As an educator and a parent, I, am complete, I completely understand the importance of getting the students back in the classroom. I'm extremely pleased to see my girls and their peers being able to attend school in person and seeing that Whittier Tech is also adding a day of instruction to the shop weeks and increasing time to full days. However, while I am pleased with what is being done in the classroom, I am extremely disappointed to hear once again that sports are being canceled for the fall two season. This decision has absolutely crushed my daughters once again, along with their fellow teammates and coaches. I feel like the message is being sent to these kids again is everything this year is not going to happen from sports to banquets to possibly even the prom and graduation. They feel so secu secluded and are mentally exhausted. These kids need sports and other extracurricular activities. They need an outlet and some normalcy back in their lives. My daughters have been on the sideline for a year now while watching their friends from surrounding school districts participate in sports all along. There are many safety measures that have been implemented to keep everyone safe on and off the field. I would not be writing this letter as a parent if I didn't feel comfortable allowing my daughters to participate. I think most parents also feel the same. If the administration is not comfortable with the students particip participating, maybe the question should be, what are we not comfortable with? What steps can we do to be comfortable? Is it because of the amount of students who they may come in contact with? One suggestion that I have is could Whittier Tech look into pool testing all athletes who want to participate playing sports? There are many school districts that are now doing this, including Haverhill Public Schools. Mm -hmm to help gather data to the students back into the classroom. Why can't this be used to help our kids play sports? However, if sports were reinstated, there would be a rise in cases. I would totally support a positive end to the season for well-being of everybody involved. 
but I ask why not try to give the students and coaches an opportunity to be successful in getting them active in their mental health back. As I said earlier, yes, I am excited to see the steps that Whittier has taken to get the students back into the classroom. But I am urging you to please reconsider your decision in canceling sports once again. Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Allison uh, Dawkins. One more letter here. Uh, this is from Allison Dawkins' daughter, Maggie. Hello, Superintendent Lynch and school committee members. My name is Maddie Dawkins, and I am a sophomore in CAD drafting. I strongly believe that the decision about canceling the fall sports season was not the right decision. As a student last year at Whittier, I can say that sports had a huge impact on my high school experience. Many incoming freshmen are nervous about going to, the, to a new school, especially in a school this size. In high school, it could be hard making new friends. This year, it is even harder. You have next to little social interaction with students due to the fact we are in the same room with the same 10 or so students every day we are in the building. <clears throat> School is so much more than sitting in a classroom. There is a reason that there are extracurriculars. Some students live for the joy of going on a bus, getting hyped for games, or can't wait to rush down to the locker rooms as soon as the last bell rings. All athletes want to get better and see their teammates and play a sport they love so much they would do anything to do so. Sports are just more than putting on a jersey and representing your school on a field court or track your team is fine is your team is second family there is no other bond like it playing soccer and basketball last year i got to play with some amazing athletes some of those are now some of the, my closest friends sports aren't just a game you play it is a way you're able to escape everything in your life when you are playing it is like nothing else matters in the world except for the game Students at Whittier who are on a sports team have been waiting for their chance since last year when we got shut down. And what about seniors? Do you know how many seniors won't be playing sports after high school? This should be their last year of being able to do what they love, but instead the decision took all that away from them. Another reason this decision is affecting athletes is that other schools around us are playing. Whittier Tech, do, uh, Whittier Tech students are doing their part in following all COVID protocols. It shows that there is a way to stay safe and it can be a safe way to play. This should have some sort of impact on the decision of fall sports season and all other seasons that are going to be overlooked. To conclude, I encourage you to consider allowing us to play this fall two season even if we don't play against other teams, at least give us the ability to practice and stay with our teammates and coaches. Sports are our second family, our second life, and we will not do anything to jeopardize it. Thank you. That was from Maddie Dawkins. <clears throat> uh, we have one more uh, from a student. And dear Superintendent Lynch and school committee members, my name is Victoria Thompson and I am a junior in culinary arts. I am writing this letter to you today because I believe that Whittier Tech athletes deserve a fall two sports season. Ever since I was little, I've been playing sports. It's a way to escape stress of school and personal life while also having fun and being with your teammates. I play soccer and I run track here at Whittier Tech. Although soccer has always been my favorite sport, this year due to COVID, it has been taken away from me. After having my spring track season taken last year and now my soccer season this year, it's a little frustrating. Sports is what gets me through my school day because I know that once the last bell rings, that means I get to be in my element. It's not just me who is feeling this way. It's all other Whittier athletes as well. 
I understand that Whittier's number one priority is our safety, especially during COVID, and I appreciate that. Even in my personal life, I make sure to keep myself safe from the virus. This is why if we are able to have our fall two season, I would, I would be completely accepting of any new rules or regulations such as wearing masks and altering the game. Some friends of mine over Haverhill High School were able to have their soccer season. However, new strict guidelines were followed such as not hitting the ball, no unnecessary touching and no throw-ins. If we were able to have a season, these guidelines would be completely fair and I would have no problem following them. However, if the decision is to cancel our season, then I hope you truly would consider us to hold practice with our coaches. I feel this is a safe option that allows minimal risk of spreading the virus because our team is small and can take the proper precautions <clears throat> such as wearing masks and social distancing on the field. I feel it is, a good, it is good to maintain some sort of connection between your teammates during these hard times and while staying in shape. As a student athlete, I hope you consider what we have to say. Thank you for your time and consideration, Victoria Thompson. Uh, that is it for the public comment. Brett, can you just tell me what's fall two? What are they What are they speaking about? I don't understand what fall two means. So fall two was split up into two seasons. You could either do it at the beginning of the year or you could do it from oh. February 22nd through okay. middle of April. Okay, thank you. I thought they were referring to 2021. Okay, thank okay. you. I no. didn't understand. Okay, no, thank it you. includes football. Yes. Okay. But I have a question. I don't know about you guys. I said this when we were talking before. I have 22 inches of snow on the ground out in the backyard. You don't play soccer in the snow. You don't play football in the snow. Unless you're a professional and they get the guy out there dealing with plowing it every minute. So how do you, how do, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to these letters, but if that's the sports we're talking about, those don't get played out uh, outdoors in the middle of winter. Well, so I, I think, you know, I think the MIAA is really trying to have sports for, for the kids. Um, so they moved it to the fall season two. I'm not sure how it's going to get pulled off. Um, I looked into pricing what it would cost for us to clear our field um, of snow and it's $2,000. So you would have to think $2,000 every time we have a snowstorm, um, it would be a significant financial um, impact. Um, and then never mind the cold of February and March. Um, and right now we're using our gym as is gonna be a lunch area. Um, so we don't even have that space or facility um, to use for kids right now um, for athletics. So it's a tough, it's a tough situation. And my, my heart really does hurt for the kids because yeah. I don't understand. I I think, I think we all feel the same way. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, if I, if our gym was available, maybe they could come up with the, the coaches could come up with something to be able to do, <coughs> even if it were our own kids and stuff. But playing soccer and football in the snow, and and it's been eighteen and twenty degrees. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy either. It goes to show how much they miss these things, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. No question. Uh, yeah. It's and 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 I I mean those were wonderful letters yeah. from everybody yeah. involved, the mothers, the two two girls, excellent, and they really really make it clear how important this is, and if there were anything we could do. But it doesn't seem like there's anything we can do. Well, I'm not sure about that. I think Mr. Leganis and I have had a few meetings with some coaches um, trying to set up some trainings. Actually, one was the girls' soccer coach um, to try to get um, things moving. But you know, it, it's it's hard. We you know facility-wise and um, 
you know, our, our, this is just heartbreaking. COVID is terrible. And it's, you know, we're going to do our best to try to, to pull things off. Um, we're looking at the spring season and hopefully, you know, the, everything will be outside. There will, won't be snow and we'll be able to have some sense of normalcy. You know, we're looking at a, diff, a prom, we're looking at graduation. You know, we got to try. Um, we have not given up. We won't give up. Um, I think that's one of the pushes that Mr. Laganis and the administrative team and our teachers, we, we know how hard this is and we are trying, um, but we're doing it in steps. You know, the, the next, the first step was bringing the kids back, back, back on Mondays. The yeah. second step will now be doing full school days um, and then we'll continue to, to roll out. Um, transportation is still a, a linchpin for us. Um, we have to follow those guidelines. And um, until we're able to put more students on school buses, we're kind of at a stall. Um, but I'm under, what I'm hearing is that we'll have new um, information from DESE regarding transportation guidance. So, um, you know, those are the letters and, you know, Mr. Leganis and I will reach out to those students um, and have a little talk with them because this is hard, no doubt about it. Has the MIA talked about spring sports and bring them back a little earlier? Oh. No, 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 it would be the end of April that they'd be, everything's a little bit short because they did add this fall season too in the middle of all of this. So, so not late March. No, probably not. I mean, baseball used to start mid to late March. Yeah. yeah. They have, the MIA is, I'm on the, 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 on the board for uh, track, cross country and a couple other sports. They're basically dealing with the ruling from the, from the state and they're looking at how to get some of the tournaments in. And uh, they just sent out a whole, at a meeting uh, a week ago, there's a whole, we voted on a whole list of recommendations from the health department on how to hold uh, tournaments, you know, a limited number of players per team, uh, they have to, uh, especially the indoor track, mm -hmm. uh, every other lane, uh, shot put, uh, you have to bring your own shot, shot put, it has to be cleaned. There's a whole high jump. Nobody can touch the bar. They have to have a group of people disinfect the bar every time somebody. It's a whole liturgy, but a lot of the larger schools are, are, are preparing to. Uh, try to get into this uh, fall two season, especially into a track. They're really pushing that. Mm. I know we're, we're doing it in, in Haverhill. Um, you know, we're playing basketball, we're playing hockey. Um, you know, hopefully we got, I'm a supporter of, of allowing them to play. I can say that I've supported it on that school committee and, I, and I'd support allowing them to play here. Um, you know, we're doing it. We haven't had any issues. Um, that has any there's been any mass spreading of, of COVID because of sports returning. We haven't had those problems. Um, so I am and remain um, a, a supporter of, of allowing uh, students to play sports. I think there's another issue along with the sports and and I mean we're talking about the various obstacles. I think the transportation is also another obstacle. When we're talking about one city, it's a lot different than, than 11 towns and this kid's from here and this kid's from there. And we do our best to, to be able to get them to school. And I know we do what we do after school to pick to take our kids in, uh, from the sports areas. But under these conditions, it's just another one of those, can you surmount this or not? And not. <clears throat> It's, it's, it's just a terrible situation all the way around. Thank all right, you. we're going to file these letters with the minutes of the meeting. We'll, we'll move on. Uh, approval of minutes for the regular school committee meeting. Do we have a motion? Move to accept. Second. All in favor? Oh, no, I got to do a roll call. Actually, I have to do, I'm sorry, I got to back up a little bit. I got to do roll call attendance first. <clears throat> Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Here. Yeah. Ms. O'Connor. Yeah. Mr. LaBella. 
Yes. Mr. Tucker. Mr. Irving. Here. Dr. Testaverde. Yeah. Mr. O'Connor. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Mrs. True. Yes. Mr. Fichera. Mr. Lesage. Yes. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do um, the roll call vote for the regular school committee meeting uh, minutes. Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Mr. Labella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Mr. Osage. Yes. Okay. Uh, Treasurer's report. Oh, I'm yes as well. Oh, sorry. They <laughs> skip you. <laughs> <coughs> I move to accept Treasurer's report. Second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, roll call. Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. Labella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Yes. Mr. Osage. Yes. Okay. Uh, old business. We have no old business uh, posted. Uh, reports and communication. Alyssa. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, and all other school committee members. DECA had four students advance to states, which will be held virtually in early March. Any student that places at the state level will move on to compete at their international level, which is also virtual this year. They're also organizing distributing the Wooden Roses sale for Valentine's Day. In fact, club had such great success with the greeting card distribution for the holidays that they have decided to do it for Valentine's Day. They are working with the Key Club and student government to get 800 Valentine's Day cards filled out and distributed to local assisted living facilities. In January, the Multicultural Club enjoyed hearing presentations by two members about their recent quinceanera celebrations. They also celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day in advance by discussing everything they know about this key figure in U.S. history and shared their knowledge and ideas about his influence upon society. They took a virtual tour of Brazil, where two of their members are from. They are currently making Valentine's cards to give to their contracted cleaning staff and appreciation for all they do. Many of the cards are handwritten in Spanish as well as in English. Chess Club is still meeting every week, which consists of lessons, in-house tournaments, and informal practice. Your leaders continue to participate in leadership training workshops. They will be learning how to lead online discussions by setting expectation norms, running icebreakers, and setting goals. They also continue to brainstorm ideas to help freshmen. The Key Club is meeting regularly through Google Meets. They are working with Interact and student government to do Valentine's Day cards for assisted living facilities and some Meals on Wheels programs. The cards were designed by Whittier students and printed by the graphics department. They hope to do this again for St. Patrick's Day and Easter. GSA continues to meet on week one Mondays. They had 15 members attend this week's meeting. Yesterday, seven students attended the GSA Leadership Council. Student government is continuing to meet and discuss ideas for building school community and spirit. They are excited to be working on a spirit week to encourage students both in the building and in Whittier's remote community to have a chance to have some fun and show some creativity. They're also working with Key Club and others to fill out encouraging cards for local assisted living residents for the upcoming Valentine's Day holiday. Lastly, UN Club met yesterday after school. They will soon begin preparations for an online conference sponsored by the United Nations Association of Greater Boston that they will be attending on March 20th. It is a conference on the UN Sustainable Development Goals and it will be virtual. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Just glad to see they're keeping up with these after school yeah. activities. It can't be easy, but I'm so it's so worth it. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Uh, moving on, superintendent's report. Ms. Lynch. 
Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Tonight before you will have personnel action, uh, electronics engineering instructor, a bus driver, a teaching assistant in the vocational side of the house, a special education instructor, and an HVAC instructor at long-term sub. I also have before you the CTI grant evening education program um, positions that we are hiring for. And I'll, I'll share more about that in my report, the CTI program. We have a resignation uh, due to retirement of a history instructor. Um, and tonight, a budget update. Um, last, in our last meeting, we, had a, we were at 4.49% increase. Um, and with the help of the school committee, we are down to a 2.42% increase for next year in our, in our fiscal budget. There is not an MCAS update at this time. On Thursday, January 14th, 21st, and February 4th, I attended the remote MABA CTE directors meeting. On Friday, January 15th, 22nd, and 5th, I attended the Mayor of Haverhill's Task Force virtual meeting on public health and vaccinations within the city. On Friday, January 15th, I attended the North Shore Superintendent's Roundtable meeting. On Thursday, January 21st, I attended the virtual Ipswich School Committee meeting along with Mr. James. I'm happy to report that Mr. Honey. we appointed as the Ipswich, Ipswich representative for three more years. On Wednesday, February 3rd, I attended Jimmy's the wife. waitlist data analysis discussion. Wife. There is considerable discussion around the state about ensuring that all students have access to vocational programming in schools. On Thursday, February 4th, Kara Cosmos and I attended the MASS Chapter 78 in spending webinar. On Friday, February 5th, I, I attended the remote North Shore Superintendent's Roundtable drop-in meeting. Um, this was an opportunity to meet with other superintendents, discuss COVID-19 concerns in our school and with another school district. I think everyone in our district is really trying to figure out ways to try to bring our students back um, to school more this coming year. And on Tuesday, February 9th, I attended the MBSA monthly remote meeting. Um, and at this meeting, it's the Merrimack Valley Superintendents Group, there was considerable discussion regarding the vaccine rollout for educators um, and how slow that seems to be going and um, you know how we can try to, to make sure our teachers are vaccinated as quickly as possible. Um, our goal has always been to bring more students back to school as we safely can. Um, for the past two Mondays, we have had our sophomore engineer students back during their vocational week. Um, we've had to coordinate busing and we've had a few minor adjustments in shops to ensure they maintain their, their distance safely. Um, we've had little to no problems with this transition. We would now like to bring our students back to a full day of school beginning the Monday after vacation. Um, students have been assigned seating in the cafeteria with their cohort. We've developed a chart with Scott Robertson and CAD. And over the last two weeks, teachers have been working with their students on where they'll be sitting for lunch when we return from vacation. Ms. Jensen has done a fabulous job working with a number of students in each, each lunch and developing a safe plan. We are using the cafeteria, the lobby, and the gym, and we'll be having five lunches to make this happen. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Whittier was awarded grant funds through the Career Technical Initiative, which those were the positions that we just hired a few people for, um, to run career training programs for unemployment and underemployed people in Massachusetts. We'll be hosting a 200-hour welding program for eight students and a 200 advanced manufacturing program for 10 students. These programs will, will begin on Monday, February 22nd, and will run through the week of May 20th, 21. The programs will be a blend of in-person learning and online training. The programs will be instructed by Whittier Day School instructors, as well as former alumni who work in the field. The intention of the CTI program is to have all candidates employed full-time in the industry by the end of the program. The grant funding is in response to the number of jobs lost in the state of Massachusetts as a result of COVID-19. As outlined, the CTI grant Mass Hire in Massachusetts and Whittier will work together to recruit, train, and place these students in employment opportunities. Whittier will be awarded 90,000 upon completion of the programs. Of this 90,000, 63 would go to Whittier and 27,000 would go to Mass Hire. Um, it's been a, 
it's been a difficult year for us as a school district to pretend in extracurricular activities, which we just spoke a little bit about. It's been a heartbreaking to be the bearer of bad news with the canceling of that athletic season. Unfortunately, we feel the need to do it again for the season two, which is supposed to begin on February 22nd. Um, we understand how important sports are to our students and parents, but right now our priority is getting our students back to move to in person safely. Um, Mr. Leganis and I have met with several coaches about doing some after school training programs. Um, and we're hopeful that those will get started relatively soon um, because we do think it is important for our kids to have physical activity um, and, and to be with their peers after school and do some athletic work. Um, and again, like I said, uh, we are very hopeful that um, in the spring, we will be able to do spring athletics. Um, Ms. Cosmos is gonna discuss MSBA during her part of the, the meeting tonight and our next work steps towards ensuring we have voted for the feasibility project in her report. Um, this is a long-term project that we have been working with the state. Um, since I've been the superintendent, I mentioned this at every meeting I attend in the community. I'm happy to show you the website that Mr. Williams developed to again, ensure transparency in our community regarding a possible renovation project. I also want to publicly thank Kara Cosmos and Beverly DeSalvo on completing the paperwork to get us to this point. So I think Kevin's gonna to try to get the, um, the website up, but while he's talking, oh, oh, there it is. Wow, you did that quick, Kevin. So this is the website that we plan on rolling out to our communities. Um, you want to work through it a little bit, Kevin? Sure. Um, a lot of this uh, content, uh, Mr. Salvo uh, also helped uh, provide me with a lot of this information. But uh, really, some of it is for public, uh, it's for required processes, required notifications. And also, it's a little bit, honestly, to, uh, you know, to, to, to get people excited about, you know, uh, investing in the future of Whittier for our students for the next 50 years. So as we go through and as we have things, as we go through this building process flowchart, we'll be able to develop more content, deliver more documents to keep everybody involved, up to date and informed as we go through. As part of uh, some of the laws, you can see like we have to provide contact information for certain members that have to be as part of this thing. And then there's also if people in the community want to contact, they have a quick and easy way to do that. And that will go to Mr. Salvo, who is acting as a uh, internal project manager, I guess, Marie, as, as uh, what she's doing for us, uh, you know, post her retirement here at Whittier Tech. Thank you, Kevin. So we're going to roll this out probably in the next week or so, because I think it's important as we go to budget meetings that people are aware of the website and they can look at those and you'll be able to answer questions. Um, what used to be our roadshow, I don't know if we're going to be traveling again this year, if everything will be Zooming, but um, we do want to share it with, with our community. So some of the things that we've been looking at, this is our chance to add programs. If we're going to add programs, looking at a building project. So we're looking at adding and I'm just saying, this is like a wish list um, of programs that we're, we're looking at. We we'll need to see if there's jobs in the market, if there's a market for it, um, if it's a feasible for us to have these programs. But one would be vet tech, um, a power equipment technology, marine service technology, aviation technology, welding and sheet metal working, joining technologies, construction craft labor, and then some additional health programs, medical lab technician and operating room technician. So though we have a lot of homework to do, um, but we wanna make sure if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this right and, and look at these different types of programs um, moving forward. Are there any questions regarding that? No, it's great though that you have a website up. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. It's a great start. It's going to help. And we can refer people in our community to that website. So for, for questions at the beginning, thank you. Um, so during February vacation, we are doing a boot camp for students um, who at this point struggled academically. You know, um, being home and in a hybrid model is not easy. And we've, we've reached out to a few students that are struggling. 
Um, this is an opportunity for students to make up work and continue to work towards school promotion. The guidance counselors and the assistant principals have done significant outreach to students and parents um, to try to get them involved in this program. And I think the last I heard, we had about 40 students signed wow. up um, for this, this February boot camp. We're also in the beginning stages of planning for the summer. Um, our loss of in-person learning in our vocational areas, um, in our academic areas is very concerning. We would like to set up a two week summer program in July for all vocational areas. And these two weeks would allow our students to have two weeks of intense vocational training um, to try to make up some lost time um, and make sure they're prepared for the next school year and the next grade level. Um, the downside of setting up a program like this would we be able to have a middle school discovery program um, because we would um, obviously have limitations within the building at that point. Um, and we also feel it's important to do our academic programs, uh, MCAS boot camps in the summer. Um, so those would that would be the downside. Um, but we would be using ESSER COVID funds to support this, this program. Um, which we think is a real good use of those mm -hmm. that grant. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions regarding that? It's in the very Sally. Beginning stages. Sally, uh, did I, you have a question? I have a general question. Okay. Well, I uh, just for my own idea on this hires, this electronics, robotics, engineering instructor, mm -hmm. that individual was hired at 99,000. Yeah. Wow. I don't know we went that high. <laughs> <laughs> we do. That's where he landed on the salary schedule. Yeah. That's based on his previous experience and education. Really. Okay. Yeah. Maureen, that the summer program, the two week summer program, mm -hmm. is that just for two weeks or is it Two week blocks. Two two weeks. Two two, two weeks. Week sessions, right. Okay. And again, this was just an idea we had at the beginning of the week, and we've all kind of jumped on it because um, we really think this is important, and we're concerned. You know, we want to make sure our kids are ready for work or college or whatever they're going to do, but that they have what they need in their trade area. Yeah. Ari, do you think not having the middle school program may impact um, admissions? You know, we've kind of traced that over the years. There hasn't been a huge, I don't think it's been a huge recruitment piece. Okay. Um, I can tell you that the teachers that teach it love it. They yeah. Love the middle school kids and there's some excitement with that. Um, so it's, I don't think it's something that I, I'm going to say we're going to get rid of forever. It's just another one of this year. <laughs> this is what we, we have to do. Okay. But this, you know, I said earlier, there's ways that we could be creative too. Maybe in the fall, we could do an after school program for those mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of looking at it the summer, we could do something in the fall. So, you know, lots of options open, but. Yeah. Um, uh, how are we doing on applications? We're up. I think as when I heard yesterday, we're at 600 applications. Wow. That's wow. Cool. Yeah. I remember. Uh, Last meeting, you you were down. Yeah. yeah, down at this time. So we seem to have wow. picked up a little bit. Still down a little bit from last year, but not as concerning. Good. Oh, good. That's good news. Um, and the next thing I have, if it works correctly, Mr. Williams is going to show a video. So our teachers are working really hard um, at home when we've had remote days. And the recent snow day, we had um, a teacher showed us a video. Now, Mr. Leganis, every morning says the Pledge of Allegiance and, and tries to get those kids that are in the woe, the you know, online program moving. So, and at least they're connected to our school. And then also the kids that are in the hybrid model that are home remote, you know, we get up together, we take attendance and um, Mr. Leganis does the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and he's also been known to do some dancing. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lazy, great right? work again. Today he was dancing. Um, so if, you know, it was, we had three little boys watching Mr. Leganis do the Pledge of Allegiance from, from a teacher's home and she showed us the videotape. So I'm hoping Kevin can show it. Oh, there it is. Oh, 
So that's just some of that's the ways awesome. we are trying to engage our kids from home. Yeah, that's and have a awesome. Bit of fun. So, um, you I, know, I, go ahead. I did see on CNN that the district out in the Midwest, the superintendent did a video on a school day remote doing a rap song. Oh. <laughs> Could work okay. on that, Maureen. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a hint, Maureen. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Leganis and I have joked that one year we're going to videotape in the summer on the beach, like yeah. it's snow day. <laughs> More than yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, we haven't figured it out yet, but I'm, I'm, I'll work on my rapping skills. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's all I have for you tonight. Oh, one just quick little update about COVID, where we have been this year at halfway point. Um, we have had. Total positive cases, 109 positive cases at the school. We have had 13 staff cases, about 7%. Remote student cases, we had seven, so about 5%. So those are students that are remote only. Um, and then our hybrid student cases, we have had 89 students. That's wow. 8%. Um, and we have found zero transmission in the schools. So we do feel like we are operating safely um, during this pandemic. And that is all I have for you tonight. Thank you, Noari. Uh, moving on. Principal's report. Okay, good evening. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, rest of the school committee members. As you can see and hear from uh, Superintendent Lynch, we are pressing on with the attack keeps moving forward. Uh, I'd like to, to invite anybody who wants to come in the morning and dance. And I know, uh, Ms. Lynch, you'll, you'll be doing a rap song pretty soon. That 750, if you like, that will wake up the Whittier community. So that being said, uh, it's so exciting to see our students in, uh, like Maureen said, uh, in the in-person days, the Mondays, we started with the vocational, our sophomores and the juniors, and that started January 25th, and that's gone smoothly. So we have five days, kids at the building. Also, as you've heard, February 22nd, uh, after break, uh, the extension of the day till 2.03, uh, that Superintendent Lynch said, uh, and kids are gonna eat lunch. Uh, so today, just a little story. Uh, I was in the, the cafeteria, we were looking and setting up and getting ready for the, um, the, the date of February 22nd. And the students were down there looking at their areas and their pod areas. And they were so excited. The seniors that were down there, I spoke to a few of the seniors, they could not wait to eat lunch at Whittier Tech and <laughs> extend the day till two o'clock, you know, till 203. So it was pretty amazing to hear that. Uh, and, and they were like, they can't wait to extend the day and be here at Whittier Tech. So that's, that's amazing. Uh, also, we continue you know, we must continue to follow all the protocols, uh, the six feet apart rules and, and the masks. Uh, and I, with full confidence, I know that we will do that. Um, also, uh, as you know, our students, um, you know, are completing midterm exams this week. Uh, if you can believe it, our term three starts after break uh, and the report cards, term two report cards are going out the 26th of February. Uh, also, you heard that, you know, enrollment, the guidance counselors have started their interviews in all the middle schools uh, on a daily basis through virtual Google Meets. Oh, okay. um, yeah, as difficult as that may, may sound, uh, Ms. Morrison and her crew are really working out the kinks. Uh, as you can imagine, some of our eighth graders are in person, they're remote, tracking them down. 
by and doing the interviews individually uh, throughout this week. And also oh, wow. the vacation week. Uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Ms. Morrison has also, you know, who's our head of guidance, as you know, has been uh, running virtual information ses sessions uh, that, you know, they can register online and listen. Uh, and the middle schools um, that are interviewing this current week are the Rupert Knock, Amesbury, Ipswich, Sacred Hearts, and Hillview. And that's what, what's going on this week and into vacation. Uh, and I asked Ms. Morrison, she said, you know, things are going uh, as best as they can be uh, expected. So uh, you can imagine how difficult, and I applaud them for doing that as well. Um, the grab and grow meals uh, will still continue, even though we're extending the day and feeding the children during the day. Uh, the grab and go meals will still be available at the end of the school day for the students uh, who wish to have the meals available uh, during the remote days uh, and obviously the weekend days. Uh, the remote uh, pickup sites still remain the same. Kevin Welch, our cafeteria manager, uh, the, the, the breakfast and lunch will continue to be available, available every Monday in the month of February from 10 to noontime at the Poets Inn. And again, these meals are provided for the seven days. Um, as you heard from Melissa, our virtual clubs are in full swing. Uh, and also our student government, uh, they've been giving ideas um, about, uh, you know, working on the morning announcements and helping me out in honoring uh, this month, uh, the Black History Month. Um, also the chess club, uh, just a funny story before I end. Uh, the online matches are going, and I guess the kids call Mr. Allen, who's our en English teacher, uh, the chess super grandmaster. Oh. I did witness him. Um, I walked into his room to see how he was doing, and he said, excuse me, Mr. Leganis, I have to make this move, this chess move, because he's playing these kids online, uh, you know, and it takes days to, to make the move. So uh, kind of fun, interesting, but they're making it happen, so. That's all I have for you. All right, thank you. Any questions? All right, move on. Uh, business manager, Kara. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Lynch, and members of the committee. I have as part of my presentation four actions for you to take this evening. And as the superintendent alluded to earlier, they all have to do with preparing for the next step for our MSBA project. Just to give you a little background, over the past 14 months, Whittier Tech has been in the eligibility phase of our school building project with MSBA. We're now nearing the end of this eligibility phase and we expect to move on to the next stage, which is the feasibility stage. One of the requirements of the feasibility stage is for the school committee to vote to authorize an appropriation to cover the cost of the feasibility study associated with this project. The first step I'm going to ask you to approve is to, is I'm requesting a vote by the school committee to authorize the establishment of a capital projects fund. A oh, capital moved. projects fund is required under the uniform Massachusetts accounting system to track expenditures for a multi-year capital asset, such as the renovation or construction of a school building. And the capital projects fund differs from the district's capital outlay fund in these three ways. The first being that financing in, is provided in whole or in part by the issuance of long-term debt. The second is that expenditures are made during more than one fiscal year. And the third is that expenditures are project oriented and not a regular part of our ongoing operations. And capital projects can be funded by stabilization funds, by borrowing, or through warrant articles approved by our member communities. I'm requesting authorization by the school committee to establish this fund. So moved. Second. You want me okay. to make the motion or what? Uh, no. we, are, we already have it, uh, Charlie. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, okay, uh, any discussion on this? All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Wood? Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. LaBella? Yes. Mr. Irving? 
Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Mrs. True. Yes. Mr. Lesage. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The second part of the second vote that um, we're asking you to approve, um, I'm going to give you a summary about that at this point as well. Um, in FY21, this current budget year, the school committee approved a capital outlay budget totaling 695,000. 345,000 of these funds were allocated for the final phase of the athletic field project with the remaining 350,000 to be applied towards the cost of the MSBA feasibility study. The field project, as I've reported uh, at earlier meetings, is nearly complete and the cost is not expected to exceed $250,000. Because of COVID-19, the athletics budget has unused funds, which can instead be utilized to cover the cost of the field project. This would then free up the entire capital outlay budget to be available for the cost of the feasibility setting. We are requesting therefore that the school committee approve a transfer to reallocate the entire 695,000 capital outlay budget appropriation for the MSBA feasibility study. So I believe Mr. Lebel. a motion to accept. Second. 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 Any questions, discussion? Uh, I have one question. Let's say, I mean, we're obviously we're going to have our fingers crossed and we're feeling very positive that we're going to get this. Let's say we put the money out and we say, yes, we're going to go ahead and we appropriate the money for the feasibility study and we don't get the project. What happens to the money for the feasibility study? And if we say, okay, we're going to do this and we want to put our name in again for next year and we already have the money, how many years can we do that, that the money can be held in abeyance, in escrow, whatever you want to call it, for, for use in that particular area? That's an excellent question. And I admit that I don't have a complete answer for that. Um, as for the second part of the question, I don't believe that if we, if we didn't, I, I don't, I'm very optimistic that we will move forward with the process. I, I don't know that if that didn't happen, it would happen again next year. So having said that, if for some reason it did not happen, I would imagine that I would have to contact the Department of Revenue and ask for their guidance on how to handle those funds. I imagine they could stay in the capital projects fund because it is a special type of fund or that the school committee could vote to move that money back into the stabilization fund, which could then be held in abeyance for any future capital projects that we might need. So it's a great question. I don't have a specific answer, but I'm, I'm certain there are avenues that the school committee could take were that to happen. Well, the other question that would kind of follow is, okay, we do the feasibility study and it mm -hmm. costs us, you know, $2 million for this mm -hmm. feasibility study. And then they tell us we don't want the, pro they don't want to give us the project. What happens to our $2 million? Down the tubes? I don't think that it is down the tubes. Again, I'm not 100% certain, but it is a reimbursable expense depending upon the percentage that we are uh, determined to be reimbursed at. So I believe that we would get some of that money back. For the other part of your question, if the feasibility study exceeds 1,800,000, which is what we're proposing, we do have the option um, next year to ask the school committee to appropriate further funds. And that actually has been accounted for in next year's proposed um, capital outlay budget um, to put additional funds aside for things that we may not know we need to spend money on for this project yet. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, we'll vote on this. Thanks. Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. LaBella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Yes. Mr. Lesage. Yes. Okay. 
right. Okay. Um, the third vote that we are requesting from you is, um, I've mentioned earlier, just a few minutes ago, that we've identified one million eight hundred thousand dollars in eight hundred thousand dollars, excuse me, in funding that is available to cover the cost of the feasibility study. We are requesting that the school committee vote to authorize a transfer as follows. The sum of $1,105,000 from the stabilization fund and the sum of $695,000 from the capital outlay fund that, that this $1,800,000 be transferred into the capital projects fund. Make a motion to accept. Second. Any discussion, questions? Okay, we'll take a vote. Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. LaBella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Yes. Mr. Osage. Yes. Okay. Let's just keep our fingers crossed yeah, that we get really. it. Yeah. <laughs> and the final action that we're asking the school committee to take this evening. Uh, we are asking the school committee to vote the appropriation and authorization of $1,800,000 from the capital projects fund to pay for the cost of the feasibility study. The MSBA requires that the school committee take a vote utilizing the exact language that has been provided to you in your packet. So for whoever makes the motion for this vote must use the wording um, that is in your packet. So move. So you have to read the entire motion. Right. Okay. Is this for the capitals project? Or? This is to appropriate the money to pay for the feasibility study. I'm just trying right. to find the wording on my. I got it. Okay. Yeah, I found At it. the Whittier Regional Vocational Technical High School District hereby appropriates and authorizes the amount of 1800000 for the purpose of paying costs of the feasibility study for the Whittier Regional Vocational Technical High School. 115 Ainsbury Line Road, Haverhill, Massachusetts, including all costs incidental related thereto, the study, set amount to be expended under the direction of Whittier Regional Vocational Technical High School School Building Committee. To meet this appropriation, the district is authorized to expend the set amount from the Capital Projects Fund under and pursuant to the district agreement as amended or pursuant to any other enabling authority. The district acknowledges that the Massachusetts School Building Authority, MSBA, grant program as a non-entitlement discretionary program based on need as determined by the MSBA. And any cost the district incurs in excess of any grant approved by and received from the MSBA shall be the sole responsibility of the district. Clark, so Do we have a second? I'll second. second. Okay. I'll uh, second. Any questions or discussion? All right. Uh, roll call vote, Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. Labella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Yes. Mr. Osage. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Uh, committee chairperson. Um, March annual agenda items. Uh, school committee self-evaluation. I believe Lisa sent those out today. No, I don't think so. No? Yeah. I yeah. got one in the Google Classroom. It's, it's, it's online. Oh, oh, yeah, I haven't looked in my, I haven't looked yeah. on my, okay. 
um, you can go right online and fill it out and you just mm -hmm. click, I think, send at the very end and it goes right back. So thank you. It's pretty easy. Uh, also in March, we'll do, again, we'll do a budget review. Subcommittee reports, uh, executive. We did meet last month and the minutes of the meeting are in your packet and we need a motion to vote on. Move to Second. approve. Second. Second. All right, uh, any questions? Uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Early. Yes. Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Mr. Labella. Yes. Mr. Irving. Aye. Dr. Testaverde. Yes. Mr. James. Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. True. Yes. Ms. Osage. Yes. Okay. Uh, instructional personnel, Dr. Testaverde, please. Uh, yes, we had a meeting um, and Katrina Jensen and Kelly Fay provided us with the information regarding the new program of studies and um, the various new course offerings and some changes that are going to, some new things that are going to be added. Um, and it was a productive meeting and we're looking forward to making these changes and additions to the curriculum and extra, extra activities to support it. Uh, do we have a motion to accept the uh, minutes, minutes? Second. Mr. Uh, any questions? Uh, I'll need to vote. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Wood? Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. LaBella? Yes. Mr. Irving? Aye. Dr. Testaverde? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. True? Yes. Mr. Osage? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Plan operations. Um, we're pretty good there, aren't we? Okay. Salary and negotiations, Mr. Early? Nothing at this time. All right. Do we have any need for a meeting coming up, Maureen? Um, we are going to have to have, we have a few contracts we're going to have to um, look at, so we can do that either in March or April. All right. If you want to so, get through the budget piece and then do April, we could do them all uh, together. All right. Why don't we do Thank that? <clears throat> uh, policy, Mr. Irving. Uh, we have not met. I don't believe we need a meeting unless the superintendent has something. I don't have any new policies updated from MASC at this point. So we're good. Okay, uh, meeting dates, uh, budget workshop, March 10th, 5.30, in the regular school committee meeting, March 10th at 6.30. Uh, is there any, any other meetings re required? Uh, okay. New business, there is no new business posted. Executive, there is no executive session posted. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Early? Yes. Mr. Wood? Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. LaBella? Yes. Mr. Irving? Aye. Dr. Testaverde? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mrs. True? Yes. And Mr. Osage? Yes.